Hey, welcome to another edition of Toolbox Tuesday. Today we want to take a quick look at system charging. As always, when working with refrigerant, you want to make sure you have uh, gloves on and you're wearing uh, the appropriate eye protection. We're dealing with high pressures in our system and so when connecting and disconnecting our gauges, we want to make sure that we, we remain safe. So make sure you have the appropriate eyewear. You can see we've already got our gauges hooked up. Another thing that you'll need when you're getting ready to add refrigerant to the system or charge a system is you're going to need a scale and of course whatever type of refrigerant you're using. In this case, this system takes uh, R410A. When we get ready to charge our system, it's very important that we know the starting weight of the refrigerant that we have because as that weight drops, that's gonna tell us exactly how much refrigerant has been put into the system. The other thing is, I wanna make sure that I log that properly so I know what refrigerant went where. Depending on what company you work for, uh, some of them have different types of refrigerant logs. Uh, you'll see some people will mark them on the side of the bottle, uh, the canister or whatever, um, on, on the systems that they were used. But, Nonetheless, just make sure you have some way to track how much refrigerant was used and where that refrigerant went. So we're gonna go ahead and hook up our, uh, our tank here. We're gonna be charging 410A as a liquid. Now, um, the suction side is, is pulling refrigerant into the compressor and the liquid side has it going back out to the evaporator. So some people will charge um, from the liquid side and some folks will charge from the suction side. And just remember, if you're charging a liquid into the sub suction side, that liquid refrigerant has to be vaporized before entering or it could cause some harm to our compressor. So that's one thing that you want to make sure of. Now, um, I don't know, but like me, I was taught by an old timer and so who used analog gauges, didn't use uh, these, these nice digital gauges and they would tell me that when you cranked it open or you cracked it open and you're letting your refrigerant go in, you would see the needle kind of kind of flutter and bubble and uh, vibrate in your gauges and that's how you knew that that gas, I mean that that liquid was being flashed off into your suction side. Of course you can't see that on the digital gauges, but just remember whatever you do, whenever you're putting liquid into the suction side of the, of the system, make sure that that liquid refrigerant has been vaporized going in. So I'm gonna hook up and then we'll show you how, how to go from there. All right, so I'm gonna take my middle hose, the yellow hose here, and I'm gonna hook that to, to my tank. Make sure that my, I'm closed off here and I don't have any refrigerant traveling through. Now, once I'm hooked on, I can open up my refrigerant bottle and that's gonna allow that refrigerant to flow. Now, once I start opening those each side of my, my manifold here, that's going to allow refrigerant to go into the system. As of right now, no, no refrigerant is flowing into the system. I'm charging as a liquid, so we're going to be upside down on my scale here. And right there, we can see that I've got 14 uh, pounds, roughly 6 ounces or so. Now we're ready to start charging. Remember, now we can vaporize into the suction side. One of the things about charging into the liquid side is that because our, our pressure is higher here, we can't go from a low, pre uh, uh, a low pressure to a higher pressure. We have to go from a higher pressure to a lower pressure or else they'll just, that'll just, it'll just push refrigerant back. So when we open our gauges, we only want to put a little bit in at a time and we'll see that charge. And now we'll see that number start to drop. So if we get to 13, we'll just stop at like 10 or so. we've added some refrigerant into our, our lines. Now, I could feel the, the line starting to shake, representing that flashing point, kind of just like uh, you would on your analog gauges when you see the needle kind of fluttering. So you can't see it on the readout, but I can actually feel it um, in my hands. Also, we only want to charge a little bit of refrigerant at a time. Now we want to let that run for a while, then go back and check our superheat and subcooling numbers. Everybody has different, you know, amount. Some people say a half a pound, some people say a pound. What you don't want to do is just crank your gauges wide open and dump refrigerant. You could easily overcharge the system that way. After you've charged a little bit, you want to wait uh, several minutes, at, at the very least 10 or so, um, 
to, to check your levels, um, the, to make sure that your refrigerant has had time to travel through the system, make the necessary changes of state, and then check your superheat and your subcooling levels to see where you are then. If you're still not at the level that you need to be, then you're gonna add some more refrigerant. The key thing here is to take your time during this process and not to rush it. Taking your time ensures that you're gonna do the best job, also ensures that you won't have to do double work, and it ensures that you can hit your targeted uh, sub superheat and subcooling numbers without any error. Thank you for tuning in to another edition of Toolbox Tuesday. We'll see you next time. Hey, we absolutely love our HVAC community. We want you to continue to tune in. We want you to continue to, to leave us your, your comments. Uh, make sure you click below to subscribe. We definitely want to hear from you, and we'll see you next time.